Happy Saturday, folks. Captain 315 here. I screwed up. I made a big mistake because I'm not familiar with how to do editing and all that and do it correctly. Uh, we'll make a long story short here. I actually did the last two videos uh, in the porting series. Uh, I went into some pretty good detail on valve jobs and then went right over and kept going. I took a bone stock intake and exhaust port, stock cylinder head, flowed them on the on the uh, bench on video, paused, did all the porting and relieving on the same exact ports, went back to it and floated again to show the differences. Um, problem is I didn't have room to save these all put together in my phone. So once it was in the movie maker, I deleted the clips out of my phone and lost everything. Enter creepy crawler, Tom saved the day. Big shout out to Tom. Uh, I was not able to recover the valve job video, but I did manage to recover the porting video. That will go up after this. Um, you know, the valve job one, I don't feel like I did a great job explaining anyhow. Uh, it's just super, super detailed stuff. Um, I actually uh, made a recommendation that if you folks really wanted to get it into some performance valve job work in these, uh, to go on some YouTube videos, look up three angle valve job, uh, look up back cutting valves and things like that. It's going to be more in an automotive style, um, but you can still do it. Uh, most of us are not going to get into that much detail. Uh, are there games to be had? Absolutely. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, we're going to go over here to the board. I'm just going to give you a real quick uh, idea of a couple things you could do at home instead of just lapping the valves in. Uh, I'm going to get you at least halfway there. Uh, it'll pay off in some handsome low lift gains. So let's go over to the board and we'll just continue on from there. Okay, my head is chopped off in this. It's like a talking body. That's perfect. Much better looking. All right. Uh, we're going to just go over this real quick. Follow the voice. Follow the board. Don't worry about looking at my ugly ass. Uh, we're going to make this real quick. But basically... That's your port, okay? And you've got your valve seat that sits up here. I'm gonna e expand this so that it's more visible, okay? And then we've got a valve. Right, there's our valve. There's our valve seat. All right, we're, we're, again, we're gonna just make this really simple. Uh, what you folks can do at home, um, you know, most people, I'm, we're not gonna go into lapping valves here. I think uh, if you've made it this far into an engine, you know about taking the compound, uh, the valve grinding compound and ch -ch 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 with a little suction cup, right? Ch -ch 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 -ch. Yeah, all right. What you're looking for is when this valve right here is closed, it's going to contact your seat from here to here, correct? You want that out as far as it can be, but leave a little bit right here and maybe have it be, you know, 40 to 80 thousandths wide. We're not going crazy with this thing. So you want it to contact here in this area. Uh, here's a real valve. We're using an exhaust valve here you would want your contact to be in that range there. Maybe not quite down as far. So let's try drawing, drawing a little bit better here. There, okay? Can you see that? You got a little bit above it and you got a whole lot below it. If you have access to grinding stones or cutters, um, it would be great to actually make this. Uh, these are normally 45 degrees. Some might be 30 degrees uh, on certain engines like these opposed twins. Uh, if it was a 45, you would want to make a 60 degree cut here. If it's a 30, you'd want to make a 45. Um, very, very carefully lap your valves in Find out where your pattern is. If 
your pattern is covering this whole part of the valve, very carefully take a file or a Dremel and just knock this edge off. On the intake side, leave a nice sharp doot doot. On the exhaust, make that a nice smooth radius, okay? Very careful because if you get this contact area too narrow, you could smoke your valves. Uh, if it's too wide, you're just losing airflow. Now, the next thing you want to do is if it's a 45, you can also do the same thing out here. Just touch that edge off. Again, nice and sharp on the intake. Um, on, see, we're going to use an exhaust valve again. On the valve itself, we're going to want to do what they call a back cut. We're going to knock that edge off, right? Because now your seat contact is right here. You got all this part of the valve in the way as it's opening. We're gonna make a back cut right here. If it's a 45 degree, like all exhaust valves are to my knowledge, you would wanna make a 30 degree back cut right here. Back cut it up until you can see your, your valve here. I'm trying guys. Where your contact is, you can take all of this out up to that contact point or very close to it. You might be able to, in the picture, see, now this is an exhaust valve, obviously, that's a 45 degree, where this is a 30 intake valve. But if you look, you can see a little shine, and then you see a little bit of a dull area. That's actually a back cut. I don't know if you can see it, but we're making this a nice, smooth uh, path for the airflow, basically. Very, very hard to see on the mower stuff, and that's why I recommend looking at some other YouTube videos. I'm going to stop right there. Uh, let's go over this uh, valve job and back cut stuff. This is something you can do at home. Again, this is tedious. You need to be very careful doing it. If you have a drill press, if not, you can do it with a cordless drill, but you're going to have to be damn careful. You can chuck your valve in there, right in your drill, and you can take either a file, something that has it's very hard and has a nice sharp edge like a file. You don't want to do a piece of sandpaper with your finger. You're going to wind up with a radius. You don't really want to do that. Um, you can even use your porting tool with a straight bit on it. And again, very carefully spin your drill and make a little back cut right there. You're trying to split the difference between this angle and the angle of the valve. All you got to do is knock that edge off. Don't go nuts with it and don't get your contact area too thin, right? Okay. Back cutting the exhaust valves. This is a source of debate as much as relieving flathead cylinders and full relief versus eyebrows and intakes and exhaust. Uh, generally, performance camshafts have a very early exhaust opening. Um, much earlier at least than a stock camshaft. Uh, the reason for that is when that when your engine fires, that plug fires and you get the explosion, that piston's on the way down, they actually want to open that exhaust valve when there's still some pressure in there. That helps get the exhaust flow started and gets it out of the cylinder. Um, if it's opening into that explosion uh, on the early side, the earlier and earlier it gets with the bigger and bigger cam. That's why you get such a pop out of the exhaust when you got a performance cam in something. It's actually cracking that, starting to open that valve when it's still under the force of your power stroke. Um, now they say that your power stroke, the majority of the power you're getting out of that is pretty much over by the time the piston's halfway down the cylinder. So at that point, it's just using it up. But what they're trying to do is get that exhaust out of there so that the piston, when it's coming back up on the exhaust stroke, is the piston's not working as hard to evacuate that cylinder and get all your uh, gases and stuff out of there. Um, now, with a performance cam, guys sometimes don't like to back cut the exhaust because back cutting the valve is what's going to start your airflow, a good valve job in a back cut, is going to start airflow ripping through there the second that valve starts to open. Sometimes you want to trap some of that in there and not have it get out of the exhaust the instant it starts to crack open. 
uh, and you're holding a little bit more pressure in that cylinder until that valve is well up off the seat. Um, my personal opinion, uh, as most of us are going to be running a stock camshaft in our mowers or small engines, uh, my personal opinion, if you're running a stock camshaft, treat the exhaust just like the intake. Nice big back cut, nice relief, nice valve job. Uh, performance camshaft, uh, a very mild camshaft. I'd probably at least do a back cut on the exhaust. Uh, a big performance cam like the one that's going in the supposed twin of mine uh, opens the exhaust valve very early. Uh, it should have a hell of a note. I can't wait. Uh, that's beside the point. I am not going to back cut the exhaust and I'm actually not going to spend a lot of time doing a killer valve job on the exhaust side. I don't want that air getting out of there until this valve is well up off the seat. Now, something else I want to show you, see if I can hold the phone correctly. The intake is back cut. I don't know, you can't really see it from here as much, but if you look down in the port, let's see if I can get you lined up with the intake port. There's your intake port. These valves are both open the exact same amount, about 50 thousandths. See how much daylight you can see through there? That's got a back cut. Look at the exhaust. You can't see as much daylight. Look back and forth between the two. Again, hard to see with a camera, but there's your difference in the amount of daylight. That's the amount of air difference that's getting through there. If you look at this valve, when I open it up, let's see if I can get it on film. See that great big 45 degree cut right there? Look how much restriction that's making. That's obstructing your flow. That's what the back cut's for. Look at the intake side. That's right out of the way already. Now, obviously a 45 has more effect than a 30, um, but that's beside the point. I'm gonna stick this back up there. The reason for the 30 degree uh, valve job on some of these small engines and flatheads is that the air can't go up around the valve. So they put more of an angle on the seat and it will tend to guide the air more out, which is what we have with a flathead because of this. Overhead valve engines, for the most part, are 45s. Uh, if they have a flat chamber, Sometimes they'll run a 30 degree uh, cut on it and it actually flows better at low lift. One of the best flowing early heads back in the day in the 60s and stuff uh, was the Pontiac V8s. Pontiacs ran, a lot of them ran 30 degree seats on their performance heads because they had a flat chamber. There's a little tidbit of history for you that is relevant to nothing. All right, folks, uh, we're going to close this out on the valve job. Again, go and look on YouTube and uh, um, type in like three angle valve job, type in uh, uh, back cutting valves and stuff like that. Get a little bit better idea uh, instead of just relying on what I'm showing you here. Uh, and again, if nothing else, lap your valves in very carefully. Break that edge off right there and break the lower edge off in the port and you're going to be two-thirds of the way there.